Hey guys, it's John and Morgan with Long Haul Lifesavers. Today we're going to show you how to defrost a Samsung twin cooling fridge and we're going to replace some of the components, so stay tuned. So the first step you want to do is go ahead and empty your fridge and unplug it to start to defrost it. Now we've already done the defrosting portion, the first phase of it, uh, about a day ago. Next is you want to take out these shelves here because what we're going to do is we're going to take out this back panel. Now it may look like it's completely defrosted, but when you take off this back panel, there's coils running back there and it still can house ice, but you want to make sure it's thawed enough in this plastic piece behind here has separated from the ice so you don't rip off those coils or break this black back panel piece so that's why we waited about 24 hours to take off this back panel so let's go ahead and jump into that so when you're noticing it, that it's starting to freeze over you're going to notice a lot of excess water in your fridge and you can see here in this drawer we have a lot of water and when you take out these two bottom drawers there's actually water on the bottom of the fridge underneath here. So when it starts to defrost, you can see all the water back here on this back panel um, starting to drip water. That's where all this excess water is coming from. What you're gonna do next, now that you have your drawers and your shelves out, there's this little plastic piece that's housed right here. There's a screw back behind here. So you're gonna wanna pry this out with the flathead screwdriver. That'll come out. You'll remove a screw back here. It's a Phillips head. And then you'll have another screw down here and here, both Phillips head screwdrivers. So go ahead and take that out, pry this panel out. I just use my fingers, but you can use like an automotive body tool or a body panel tool to take these out. But there's really enough gap back here to get your fingers in behind it and just pop it out. You try to pry this out too early and it feels like you're gonna break something or it's a little too stiff. It may mean that it's still frozen to the back of the fridge. So wait a little bit and then come back to it. Once you have this panel off, there's gonna be wired connections up here, so we're gonna to wanna to remove those next. Now that we got this panel off, I'll show you those connections. It's a little difficult to see back there. So you have two different connections, one's to run the motor, one's to run the fan. The way you take these off, you have this little plastic button here, and what you're gonna to wanna to do is depress that and pull. Same thing with this one, you have another little button right here you're going to want to depress that and pull and then it should come free so as you can see on the front of our panel we didn't have any frost but after taking off the panel you can now see the coils and how we still have a lot of excess ice you can speed up this process um, using a hair dryer but it is better to let this naturally thaw if you have the time what we're going to do now is i'm going to use morgan's hair dryer to try and slowly melt some of this ice off once this is finished we'll get back in here and i'll show you what components we're going to change to hopefully prevent this in the future There are a couple little tips when you're using these. You want to make sure that you start from the top and work your way down. And what that's going to do is that warm water is going to run down. So it's going to be quicker to get the, the ice free from the bottom because that warm water is already running down. You also want to make sure you continuously move along the coils. You don't want to stay in one place too long. There is Freon in those coils and you can heat it up um, and it can cause expansion and damage to the coils in the back. So now that we got all the ice off the coils, there is a little drain hole down here. You can see this metal part right here that's riveted. We are gonna replace that part. And this piece that goes down is called a heat sink. And this is to keep that hole that drains this excess water from freezing. In that hole, there's a lot of ice. So there's really nothing you can do that's just gonna take time to de-thaw. You can't really like stick anything down there to get that ice out. This is gonna be replaced, but we can't replace that until the frost and all the ice is gone out of that hole. But what we can replace is the defrost temperature sensor. Now the sensor starts here, and then the cable follows up to here to this piece, so this is the piece we need to take out. There are three tabs on the side that you'll want to depress all at the same time and pull it out. It's hard with fat fingers. Okay, so now that we have this out, Morgan, if you want to come in here a little bit closer, 
you can see there's a red and a white portion here there are tabs on the side here and here on both sides we'll need to take these tabs off and remove those plastic pieces so that we can take this white portion off and replace it with the new defrost temperature sensor. So I'm gonna get in here and replace these and uh, we'll get back in here and show you how to put it back together. Okay, so if you pry these two tabs up here, you can pull down the white piece, which is the piece we're gonna need. You can turn it sideways and pull the cables out. Now we're gonna get in here with some wire cutters or scissors and cut these zip ties so that we can replace this piece. Now you will have to cut this zip tie that they used here. This is a double-sided zip tie. I don't have any of these, so we'll kind of makeshift our way through this and see how we can reattach that because you don't want it to actually attach to the coils because that can mess with the defrost temperature sensor. So that's why they have it elevated off of this coil. To get this defrost sensor out, it can be a little tricky. Sometimes they just pop out or you may need to take a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry it out. You want to be careful with this coil here because if you damage this coil, you essentially ruined your refrigerator and have to buy a new one now. What I like to do is hold it from this side with my finger in the back bracing it and then just pull the wire from the bottom and pop it out. That piece will sit there and then the new sensor will go back into that original spot. Okay, so we got the new temperature defrost sensor placed into the harness. We got the red and the white um, companion pieces hooked back up. So now we can go ahead and plug these in and then we'll route this up to the temperature sensor holder. So let's go ahead and plug this in first. Okay, once it snaps in, give it a little tug, it's locked in. When you put these wires back into the companion holder, the red and the black go on top, brown wire in the middle, and then your temperature uh, defrost sensor goes on the bottom. So now this is gonna wrap right along here. When you reattach it to this coil, you wanna make sure it's not touching the coil because it can offset the sensor and make it malfunction. So you wanna make sure it's a little elevated off of it when you zip tie it back. Now we're gonna take your little temperature probe and it's gonna fit back in the housing and you just set it right along the grooved edge and push it in with your thumb. So now we'll get this zip tied back up and then I've gone ahead and re uh, removed the heat sink down here at the bottom. Um, you can cut it off with side cuts or you can, it's riveted together and you can drill a hole through the rivet. If you are gonna drill a hole, I recommend putting something behind here that's pretty solid so that way you don't drill a hole through the back of your fridge. I went ahead and cut it with uh, side cutters and it came out really easily. It's thin aluminum so it's easy to cut. We'll go ahead and get the zip tied back up and then we'll show you how to replace the heat sink. So to keep this wire off of this coil here, the way I did it is I took two zip ties and looped them together. Zip tied one tight down to the coil and then the other one sitting on top of the original zip tie and then tighten down the wire on top of that. So it does give it a little bit of a gap. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be an inch. Just as long as it's not resting on that coil, you're fine. Okay, so now we're just gonna take some side snips and cut off these excess portions of the zip ties. Just clean it up a little bit. As you can see, after it's all zip tied, none of the portion of my cable is resting on this coil. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go down and we're going to replace the heat sink that rests along the heater coil. Now this brown piece right here is the heater coil. What this does is it's supposed to keep this drain hole down here thawed out and heat it up so that way it drains constantly. Now these freeze over for a couple different reasons. One, this hole here gets clogged up or frozen over and doesn't allow it to drain so it builds up water and frosts these coils. If you need to just clean out your drain, there's an access panel on the outside of the RV that you can get to that. Another reason is what we're replacing today is the defrost temperature sensor can go bad. The other thing with the Samsungs is this little heat sink here is actually really small and doesn't sit down in that hole all the way so what we did is we got some upgraded uh, heat sinks that are a little longer so it'll sit down further in the hole so it'll heat more of that hole that way it doesn't freeze over another reason these can go bad is your heater coil can go bad the way to test that is when you have this panel off if you touch this and it's hot or warm you know your heater coil is good if it's as cold as the silver coils are 
your heater coil is bad and you'll need to replace that. Ours is good, so we're gonna go ahead and leave it and we'll replace the heat sinks. So this is gonna be our upgraded heat sink. Now the original ones, the OEM ones that come with Samsung, they end right about here. So you can see we got about an extra inch of heated material. Now this is thin aluminum. So this is gonna rest on top of the heater coil and the heat sink is gonna heat up because it's on the heater coil and that heat will travel down this stem to heat up the, the drain hole. So let's go ahead and put this in. This is gonna be real easy. It's just gonna slip right over the heater coil. Place the tongue down in that hole and then just press down and it'll sit right there. Now try and make sure it's centered in the drain hole right there. If you want to, you can curl these up, these sides. Um, I don't feel that it's necessary uh, for us at least because it sits, it rests pretty solid on this heater coil. Now if it's kind of loose, you can wrap these two little tongues on the side around the heater coil just for a little bit more stability. All of our parts are replaced. Everything's defrosted. Our drain hole is completely defrosted. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put this back panel cover of, cover back on. Um, we'll go ahead and put the shelves back in and turn on the fridge. So this goes on exactly the way you took it off. You're gonna wanna replug in all your wire connections back here, and then we'll snap this panel back on. The connections, the wire connections only hook up one way, so don't worry about getting them put on wrong because they can only snap in one way. Okay, we're gonna put the silver shiny screws go along the bottom because those ones are visible. And then the browner, slightly corroded one goes behind the cover. So let's go ahead and put these in. You don't wanna to go too tight because this is screwing into plastic so you can strip it pretty easily. Just get it snug. And it's all done. So now you're ready to put in your drawers and your shelves and go ahead and plug the fridge back in and turn it on. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. If this video helped you out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to follow all the content we post. Then head on over to Instagram and follow us at Long Haul Life Series. See you guys.